Okay. Uh, good evening, professors. Uh, well, my name is Catherine Romero, and I will present you my research about phonological transference uh, through mass media famous brands in EFL teenagers from 12th grade. Okay. Basically, the this uh, study uh, emerged from the phonological transferring that I uh, experienced on my practicum, uh, at my practicum, uh, in terms of the students, uh, how the students pronounce uh, the famous brands. That I usually uh, not the uh, the right way to pronounce because of the mass media, because Chilean, uh, Chilean uh, spots uh, do not pronounce the, uh, the brands that are from other countries in a, in a, in a right way. For example, uh, uh, listening pronunciation, for example, the brand Sprite, uh, Crash, that they say uh, crash. Uh, they do not use the uh, vowel sounds uh, perfectly. So the benefit of this study is that it might uh, help students' pronunciation and improve it. How? <laughs> uh, I have decided to uh, use a quasi-experimental design, which uh, is focused on the um, students' pronunciation in terms of uh, using uh, uh, interventions with uh, uh, spots uh, from the USA or the, in, of the UK. And the students could uh, listen to the right uh, pronunciation and then they can uh, transfer the vowel sounds to another words, to other words. Uh, for example, the, the same brand, Crash, uh, transferred to the word track, which, ha which has the same uh, vowel sound. And my research question was, uh, how can phonological knowledge from mass media English borrowing that are the famous brands that I was using the treatment, improve the student's standard pronunciation in a 12th grade public uh, school classroom. So my objective was to determine in a quantitative uh, way the effect of teaching using mass media English borrowings on students' phonological transference of English babbled sounds at a public secondary school. And as a specific objectives, I chose I have chose chosen the to identify which mass media students are familiar with and to determine the benefits, the idea is to know if there is any benefit of this treatment, uh, including popular brands to teach English uh, vowel sounds, and also to identify the effects of including these popular brands in the teaching English vowels, and to determine the most difficult vowel sounds for students to, refer, to transfer in terms of the, uh, uh, when using the pre-test and post-test that I will use in the, in the, in the whole study. Well, my, I have chosen three hypotheses. That the principal one is the working hypothesis. That means the intervention have a positive effect. And the null hypothesis, which is they have no effect in any aspects and the alternate hypothesis which has a negative effect that uh, hopefully uh, do not happen. <laughs> and as a theoretical framework, I have chosen the, these uh, keywords. And the principal one is the phonological transference, which Jervis and Pablenko um, have said that the uh, uh, knowledge of a person of the vowel sounds can affect or interfere in the uh, production and perception of another language. For example, uh, our Chilean uh, <laughs> vowel B, B, 
it's uh, it, it can be articulated as a verb as a verb. It has the same meaning. But for a native speaker from an English country, may affect the message. Okay, so that is the the key uh, concept of this study, of my study. And the paradigm I uh, have used the positivist because it's a uh, factual, concrete, and as objective as possible. As um, and the researcher. Uh, me uh, do not have uh, uh, so uh, do not have a much interaction with them, and I want to affect the the result. Um, well, a quantitative approach that because I will use the quasi experimental and use a pretest uh, the treatment and post test as uh, he says. And um, well, well, Punch uh, defines the quantitative method as an empirical research, where data will be measured in numbers, which will use my concrete results, and uh, as I said before, as objective as possible. Well, the quasi experimental design, according to Campbell et al., uh, by experiment means a specific group of research that its variables can be manipulated. In this case, my variable, my manipulated variable, will be the interventions, the treatment. And why uh, experiment? Uh, why quasi experimental? Because it is a, it is using a short period of time, and do not use uh, an amount, a big amount of people. Just it's reduced because of the time and the, the study. Uh, uh, well, it's per experiment is the other way around. They uh, use a large uh, number of people, and it's uh, mainly use uh, mainly uh, works in a long period of time. The the sampling were were, were, uh, were chosen by a simple random sampling because I didn't chose by a specific age or a specific. Uh, just a uh, one genre, or no? I uh, have chosen because they they are in twelfth grade students. <laughs> well, the pretest and post test, the students will have a, a ten logos, fa the famous brands, and after uh, well, the pretest, uh, they will use the knowledge that they have, and then where they will have a list of words that they have to uh, transfer the, the sounds in a way that the logos will help them to know what, which, how the, the words are pronounced. And they can transfer and then we will uh, use the treatment and then the post test will be used, uh, will be, will be, it will be analyzed with a t-test which will help me to compare the two groups, the control and the experimental, uh, in a graphic. And I will analyze and measure by numbers if there is any effect of, uh, in both groups. Um, well, as I said before, the, the measurement is the trustworthy uh, manner to consider the quantitative method because it is objective and I can just interpret by, by interpret the, the graphics the, of the t-test. Uh, well, my expected outcomes uh, would be the working hypothesis that it's a positive effect <coughs> I want. And the limitations could be the same and PSU practice that may have, may, may, they, they may have the strikes uh, at school or the time, just the lack of time. And that's it.